I love my dogs, but I also love my garden. And for the two of them to work well together, there's got to be a few ground rules. I've got Bear here, and there's always loads of dogs hanging around. But I have to make sure that the dogs and the garden get on with each other. When I get a puppy, and this one is fairly young, I go out in the garden and I weed with them for a day. And because they love being with you, they just love company more than anything, don't you? Yes, so do I. Um, when I walk onto the flower bed to start to weed, they invariably will follow me. And I used to um, just push them off and say off. But then I met a dog psychologist and he said actually to push the dog and to say no was actually bullying and he said it's far better just to use hand signals and eye contact so you just look at them with a cross face but in the past i found a day in the garden with the dog and they know not to go on the border after that unless when they're a puppy and they think you're not looking and a rabbit shoots across the border then they take a chance on it dogs can tend to bury. You need to ascertain a certain area in the garden, dig it over nicely, bury lots of wonderful toys and bones and things in there for them so they get used to burying and hiding things in one particular spot. The other thing with dogs is the pee on the lawn, particularly bitches. You have little yellow circles everywhere where the high nitrate from the food burns the lawn and that's not particularly good if you want a perfect green English lawn. So what you can do for that is you can actually put dog rocks, which is a natural rock which comes from Australia, and you pop it into the water, and when the dog drinks it, it changes the nitrate content so you don't get this burning effect. Now some dogs are very wise to this. I tried it with my dogs, and they just lifted the rocks out and put them to one side. And if your dogs do that, which apparently is fairly common, you have to put the dog rocks in a jug and then pour the water into the bowl for the dog like that. So I used to advocate putting two dessert spoons of tomato juice onto their food every day, which an Australian client told me, and that worked to treat too. But I then found out from a vet that apparently it can lead to bladder infections and things. So really, the dog rocks is the best bet. It's only really bitches that do it. Boy dogs tend to just cock their leg everywhere, which is fine if there's loads of different places to cock their leg. If you're planning to sow a new lawn or reseed patches, it's worth trying Johnson's new Tough Grass Lawn Seed, which has been reformulated specifically to resist the damage caused by dog urine. The other thing you can do, of course, is just to follow them around with a watering can and dilute it, but that's pretty hard work for the rest of your life. Or you can take them as I do and just take them out to a convenient place and train them to pee in that spot. And that is definitely the easiest solution if you've got such a good spot like that that can take a load of wee. Other problems with dogs are the worms. It, Toxicara canis is, is a parasite which comes into dog poo from a worm. And this, in extreme cases, it can lead, if you handle it, to problems with your eyesight um, and other symptoms. But it's very rare, but it is wise to worm your dog regularly so you don't have this, and also to pick up dog poo and dispose of it. Some people I know make special dog poo loos, so they dig a foot square square, and they dig it two foot deep, and they line it with ply, and they just pick up the poo and it has no plough on the base, and they pop it into this loo, and it just rots away, and it never fills up, despite the fact they had you off two huge dogs. It, it, it didn't fill up. Another problem dog parasite is lungworm, Angiostrongylus vasorum, which can be passed on through slugs and snails. So do bring your dog toys in from the garden at night, especially in damp or wet conditions. Sometimes highly strung dogs need calming. You can use herbs to remedy this. And one very good plant is the hop. And you have hop pillows to help you sleep, but you can also plant hops in the garden. And apparently dogs will self-medicate and this will actually calm them down. I've got hops growing in my garden and I have to say my dogs have never paid any attention to them at all. But then I think my dogs are pretty chilled. 
The other thing, apparently, is willow. Willow has salicylic acid in it, and people who make willow tunnels have found that dogs that are stiff or have got aches and pains often go and chew the willow tunnels, and actually they're trying to get the salicylic acid out of the willow to help their aches and pains, so they're, again, self-medicating. So it's pretty clever stuff. So, if you're lucky enough to have a dog and a garden, there's plenty that you can do to ensure that you get the most out of both of them.